um, adjust for your personal time zone. But it is the top of the hour, and we are ready to turn it over to Michelle Morgan at Noble, who's going to talk to us about just a bit of Git. Um, and of course, as always, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Equinox Open Library T Initiative, Evergreen Community Development Initiative, and Kipo. Um, so, Michelle, I'm going to stop screen sharing and hand it over to you. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to turn my camera on just for a bit to say hello, everybody, and thank you for all for being here at the very last slot of the conference to talk about Git. <laughs> um, I'm going to see if I can share my screen. This one. And can everybody see that? My... Yep, looking good. Okay. I'm going to turn off my camera. Um, okay, so, uh, right, I can't see my screen, but I'm hoping you can if you don't see it. We then. can. We can see your screen. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that confirmation. Uh, okay, so um, my name's Michelle Morgan. I'm the System Support Specialist at uh, Noble, the North of Boston Library Exchange in Massachusetts. Um, and, and one more question. Can you see my pointer that I'm moving around the screen? Yes, we can. Okay, good, because I tend to like to point to things on the screen and I want to make sure that people can see it. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Um, you might be asking, is this presentation for me, especially since we're at the last slot of the conference and we're all wondering what day it is. <laughs> uh, but I hope it is. Um, if you want to contribute code to Evergreen, if you want to learn how to sign off on Launchpad bugs, if you're just curious about Git or anything in general, if you just want to learn new things, if you're sitting here listening, then yes, it's, it's for you. And I'm going to attempt to walk a narrow path between general and technical. Um, Git does tend to get technical, so I apologize if I stray too far in that direction. Uh, but I hope there'll be enough here to uh, be useful to, to everybody. Um, OK, so the first thing we're going to talk about is version control. Um, what is version control? Um, I, I came up with a squishy definition, version control, also known as VCS. It's some kind of system that tracks changes in a project of some sort and keeps a detailed history of that project, those changes in that project, so you can go back to a previous version of the project at any time. Um, there's lots of examples of tracking changes. A very simple one is if you open up a Word document or an open source editor document, <laughs> um, and I type a paragraph in here about version control, um, I have an undo dropdown. And if I pull that open, um, you can see it's been watching what I'm doing and kind of taking notes. Um, Here's when I typed about version control, and up here I did autocorrect because I made a typo. And at any point, I can click on one of these and go back to whatever version that was where it took the snapshot. Other examples of, ver of version control are in wikis. This is the uh, Evergreen wiki, just as a, <coughs> excuse me, example. Uh, anytime a change is made to a wiki, it keeps track of the previous version. So you can always see history and go back to any version that, um, that was in the history. Um, so what is Git? <clears throat> uh, I bet you might've guessed it is version control. Uh, so this is from the Git book. There is a Git book, which we will just show, but we won't go into depth with um, and you might recognize this paragraph as the one that I typed into my text editor. Um, 
What is version control and why should you care? It's a system that records changes to a file or set of files over time so that you can recall specific versions later. Um, and that's pretty simple to understand. Um, so that's good. Uh, Git is a little more complicated than that though. Uh, if we go to the Git site, um, there's a blurb on the, top, on the um, front of that site that has a little more information. Git is a free and open source. We really like those qualities. Distributed version control system designed to handle everything from small to very large projects with speed and efficiency. Um, and that all sounds great. Um, I wonder about the word distributed though, what does that mean? Well, what that means is any user of Git has a complete copy of the project. When you set up Git in your workspace, it will bring to your local workspace an entire copy and history of the project that you're working on. So that's a good thing. So there's, there's lots of uh, redundancy. <clears throat> so the next paragraph uh, says Git is easy to learn. Well, we'll see how we feel about that at the end of this presentation. <laughs> uh, it has a tiny footprint with lightning fast performance, all good things. Um, it outclasses SCM tools. And I'm gonna pause right there because we might be wondering what an SCM tool is. Uh, SCM is source control management. So um, it goes beyond version control and controls um, source, in other words, code, which is a lot more complicated than keeping track of text. Um, and the tools mentioned here, subversion, CVS, Perforce, et cetera, are other source control management tools that Git claims to be better than. And Git is the only one I've ever used, so it looks good to me. <laughs> uh, okay, so I mentioned the Git book before, and this is it. It's um, readily available on the Git site. It's a good reference book, um, probably more than we wanna look at at this point, but there's lots of information about Git out there, uh, lots of opportunities to learn. So Git is a, is a good fit for our Evergreen project. <clears throat> and um, I'm not watching the chat. So Andrea, I hope you will pop in if there's any questions. I'm happy to answer them. Um, I will. Right now, we're just uh, having some solidarity about, you know, Git. <laughs> OK, good. <laughs> uh, OK, so Git is a good fit for the Evergreen project. As we mentioned, it's distributed. There's lots of redundancy. It's secure. You do need to have permission to, um, to send code to the repository. Oh, whoops, I used a word that I didn't intend to use yet. <laughs> Uh, to send code to the project, um, and it's sophisticated, reliable, and smart. It knows how to deal with code and changes in code and to keep a good history. Uh, so this is an announcement on the Evergreen um, blog from May 14th, 2011, which was when the Evergreen project was moved over to Git. So it's been almost 13 years and seems to be going well, so it was probably a good choice. <laughs> uh, the Evergreen community runs its own Git server. Um, and this is its page. And if we look here, uh, there's lots of projects on this page. Uh, not all of them are active. A lot of them are here just for historical purposes. Um, there's history there. Uh, we don't really want to lose that code. So, but even though they're not active, uh, it's still available. The ones, uh, the projects here that we're mainly concerned with uh, is this list of things right here. Um, the Evergreen, the one that's just named Evergreen, that is where all the Evergreen code is recorded and lives. It's the staff client, the OPAC, the database, all the code to create that is in that evergreen Git, Git repository. Um, <clears throat> there's an OpenSurf project, which is like an underpinning of evergreen right now. Uh, there's talk of merging it into evergreen, but right now it's separate. 
uh, hatch you may recognize as the application that you install on your uh, workstations to allow Evergreen to better talk to your printers. Um, and NSIP server and SIP server are um, applications that allow Evergreen to talk to uh, third party um, vendors. Uh, if I scroll further down on that, on that Evergreen page, I see a bunch of um, repositories down here that are labeled working. And those mirror those main ones that we just looked at, but the working repositories are where the um, proposed new code goes for review. Um, so somebody, <clears throat> somebody creates a new feature or fixes a bug and they want the community to review that fix or feature. So they will send it to a working repository, which gives everybody in the community a chance to um, look at the code, download the code, apply the code, and test the code uh, to de determine whether it's a good addition to the Evergreen project. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go back to this um, main page, and I'm going to we're going to look at the the main Evergreen um, repository here. So if I click on that link, I get this. Um, list here. Uh, there's a description up here, uh, but down here are all the little pieces of code that were the mo most recently added to the core evergreen code. Um, at the point where I took this screenshot, this one was added by Jane Sandberg two hours previously. Um, these rows are called commits. Um, somebody writes some code, they send it to the Evergreen repository as a commit, and that gets reviewed, and that piece of code gets committed to the core Evergreen, <coughs> excuse me, repository if it is approved by um, everybody who reviews it. So if I look at what a commit looks like, if I click on one, um, not that one. I chose one that's not too complicated to look at. Some of these can be very long and involved. This one is pretty straightforward. <clears throat> it records the author, the committer. This big long string of characters is called the commit hash. And this is the unique identifier for this piece of code, this, this group of changes to the code. So that's important because um, sometimes you need to apply the, these um, pieces of code somewhere else. Um, and we'll look at that more later. Um, down here is uh, a paragraph here. This is a commit message. This is something that you write up when you actually save this change to your, um, your Git instance. Um, and down here are sign-offs. Uh, this particular uh, patch or piece of code was looked at at, I can't remember if it was the new devs working group or the code review, um, but a number of us looked at it. So all of our sign-offs were added here. And down the bottom uh, is a file where the changes were made. And this little link here that says diff, if I click on that, it's going to show me the changes. Um, it has some line number information of where the changes are made. Anything is in red with the minus means um, stuff that was taken out. Green with a plus means stuff that was added. Uh, so there were a couple of lines taken out and <coughs> a couple of lines added um, to this patch. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I'm going to go back to the, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm all choked up. <coughs> back to that main evergreen um, repository that we were looking at. And I'm going to, I scrolled down the bottom. At the bottom of the page, you see this section called heads. 
the um, main repository that we were looking at is every piece of includes every piece of code that has been approved and added to the Evergreen project. Um, you heard a lot of talk about releases today. Um, ever, every time an Evergreen release comes out, um, that is sort of carved off that main repository uh, into a separate repository. So this REL 312 is the, the offshoot that is the 312 branch. <coughs> and if I look a little further down here, we have a tags REL 3123. And this is the 3.12.3 release, and this will never change. The 3.12 up here might still get bug fixes um, until 3.12.4 is released, but um, these ones that say tags on them are, are frozen at the time that the release was cut. So that's, that's kind of an interesting thing to know about. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna look at using Git for Evergreen. Um, and the main idea is um, when you use Git in your, on your local workspace, you, you get local copies of that main and working repository that we were just looking at. You pull them down to your workstation. You make your changes locally. You can make branches. A branch can have a bug fix or a feature in it, <coughs> excuse me, based on the main evergreen code. You can add sign-offs if you've tested bugs and think the code is good. You can add your sign-off. Um, you can add new code. You can change code. You can break things. You can start over because it's all happening on your local machine. You don't have to worry about bothering anybody else. Um, so you can, you can play around and get familiar with things, um, make as much of a mess as you want. And you, can, you only need to uh, push your work back to a public repository when it's ready, or you don't have to push it back at all if you're just trying to trying to learn Git. Uh, okay, so let's get started looking at Git. <clears throat> um, I'm going to make several references to the new developers uh, wiki page. Um, there's so much good information there. The new developers working group is great. Um, <clears throat> And there's a whole section here on Git. Uh, there's a quick overview, which is the basic information uh, on the Evergreen Wiki. There's an installation section, which we're gonna look at in a minute. Um, and I'm not gonna touch on the other pieces other than, than showing you some stuff because we've only got less than an hour and it's late at the end of the conference. <laughs> Uh, so, if I go to the install Git section, uh, the first section uh, talks about creating an SSH key, which is the security piece that you need if you want to, <coughs> excuse me, if you want to start pushing code to the Evergreen repository. But if you're just going to play around locally, you don't need to do that yet. So, you will want to do that eventually, but I'm going to skip that part and just look at the install part. <clears throat> so on the Git site, um, I'm gonna assume we're using Windows. Uh, there are installation, oops, there we go. Installation instructions for Windows. You can download it and install it like you can any other uh, application. Um, so you would download this and install it, um, go through the prompts and it will say, <clears throat> It will install and it'll give you a chance to launch it. Um, <clears throat> so there are a couple of versions of, of Git when you install it. Normally you would use Git on the com with command line commands because it's much more powerful. Uh, there is a, a GUI interface, which we're gonna look at just sort of to get used to the concepts. Um, it's definitely not as powerful. So if you really get into to doing a lot with Evergreen with it, you're gonna wanna learn the um, command line um, 
to use its full power. But if we take a look at the Git GUI, <clears throat> this is what we get when we open it up. I get options to create a new repository, um, like a new project where I can put code, make changes, and keep track of my changes. I can clone an existing repository, which is what I would do if I were going to go and get the evergreen code and work on that. <coughs> um, and if I already have one on my com computer, I can open the existing one from there. So if I go to create a new one just to play around, um, I'm going to browse to a folder. I'm going to call it Git repositories, and I'm going to select it. So I have a folder path, um, and I'm going to click Create. And this is what Git GUI opens up, and this is what it gives me. This is my work area. Uh, this yellow part here is sort of the preview area. Um, over to the left, I have unstaged changes. <clears throat> that means I have some code, I made some changes. Um, Git doesn't know about them yet. Um, and those will be unstaged. If I want to tell Git about them, I have to stage them and send them to this area. Uh, the GUI commands are here um, and we'll go through them. Um, and here is where I would put my notes when I actually decide I'm going to take this change and make it part of my Git history. I'm going to commit it. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is explore my working copy. I want to look at my project. This is brand new, so I don't really have anything in it. Um, but if I look at it, it'll open my um, <clears throat> my folder. And if you do this on your computer, uh, it depends on your setup. Uh, I see this .git folder here. You may not see it because this is a system file. If your computer is not set to show you system files, you will see an empty folder here. Um, but the .git folder is important because that's where Git does its bookkeeping. Um, anytime you tell Git about something, it, it records it there. Um, so that's important to know about. Um, so I'm going to start doing something with Git. <clears throat> I'm going to create a file and I'm going to add it to that folder that I just created. So I just open a text editor and type something. I'm attempting to learn how to use Git. This is scary. <laughs> uh, so I save that to my, fol my uh, folder. Here it is. Um, and I'm going to go back to my uh, working area. And when I click this rescan button, Git will go and it will look at that directory and it will notice I made a change. So it's showing me that file that I added right here in unstaged changes. If I click on that, it will show me some details here. And here you can see what I typed here. It knows it's an ASCII file. It's just a text file. Um, it'll, it, it cares about it, line terminators, like return characters at the end of the line. So you'll see a lot of, of it commenting about that. But these are my untracked changes. They're untracked. They're not staged. Git doesn't know anything about them. Um, but if I like them and I want to make them part of my Git history, I will click on this stage changed button and that will send it down here. So if I click on that to get more details up in my work area, it's telling me how Git is tracking this file. Um, you see these green lines with the plus in front. So it, it's seeing these as added lines and it's tracking line numbers up here and it's tracking white space. Um, so it's these change are, changes are ready to be recorded in my Git history. So in order to actually do that, um, I would need to put my initial commit message, which is going to describe what I've done, 
Um, so I will add that there, starting my Git journey, and I will click the commit button. So when I do that, hmm, what happened? Well, I committed something. If I look down the bottom, I have a commit, and it's got one of those long strings of characters, which is the unique identifier for that commit. Uh, OK, so we made our first commit. That wasn't so hard. Um, so let's do another change. So I'm going to make a change to this file. I actually forget what I did, but I did make changes. And I guess we'll see what changes I made. Um, I go back to my working area and do a rescan. And Git goes in uh, and looks at the file I've changed. And it shows me uh, how I took out this line that said, this is scary. And I added these three lines. So if I'm happy with that, um, I can go ahead and stage those changes. I can add another commit message. I'm making progress with Git. And then I can go ahead and commit. And down the bottom, it's confirming that I made another commit, my second commit. Um, and my working area is clean because Git knows about every single change I've made so far. OK, so one more file edit. Uh, I'm going to say I just created another commit, and this is fun. Well, uh, so I'll go ahead and do my rescan, and I'll stage it. I'll add my commit message, and I'll do another commit. All right, so here's my third commit. Um, so maybe you want to see this history that I'm creating here. So if I go under repository, um, this option visualize master, excuse me, master's history. It might not say master, it will give you the, the branch name that you're working on. Uh, but if I click on that, it's going to open another window, <clears throat> which shows me all those three commits that I made. This was the first one down the bottom, starting my Git journey. And I'm focused right now on the, um, the last one, which says Git is fun. And I can click on each of these and see the code changes all in one place. So this is how it's tracking the history of my project. Um, so suppose I have decided maybe saying Git is fun is really not what I intended. Um, Maybe I want to forget that I made that change. Uh, so if I highlight the making progress commit and do a right click, I get an option that says reset master branch to here. Uh, if I click that, it's going to give me a couple of options as to whether I want to keep those changes that I had maybe to reuse later. But I, I want to just like erase all evidence that I said Git was fun. So if I reset and choose the hard option, it's going to forget all those changes, discard all local changes. So if I say OK there, and it takes me back here, and if I reload the page, notice that that last commit that I made is gone. <clears throat> so we're back to the uh, progress commit. And then if I go back to my file, it's reverted to that, to the state it was when I made that second commit. And if I go back to my, excuse me, my um, working area and rescan, everything is up to date. It's like I never made that commit at all. So I hope that sort of makes sense in terms of what Git is trying to do. And, Please feel free to put anything in the chat that you need clarification on or would like to ask. Um, because I'm going to <clears throat> move on to look a little bit at the command line. Um, when you install Git on your Windows machine, you get the Git GUI, but you also get Git Bash, which is the command line interface. And that's probably the one that you will use if you're contributing to Evergreen. Um, and this is what it looks like. It's a command line. <clears throat> so this is the um, 
on my workstation, this is my actual folder that has my evergreen project in it. So it's re referring to, um, to the evergreen um, folder that I have. And I'm on the main branch right now. Uh, if I compare the commands between the git GUI and the git bash, where you have to actually type in the command lines, um, the rescan in the git GUI is analogous to a git status command. It will tell you, um, <coughs> excuse me, it will tell you um, where you are, whether you have changes that Git knows about or Git doesn't know about or that are waiting to be committed. Um, the stage changed button that we used in the command line, it's called git add. Um, commit is git commit, so that's pretty uh, straightforward. The visualize history command that we used, um, you can get the same information on the command line using git log. Um, the reset master branch to here in the git GUI um, has a command of, of git reset. And the hard was the one that we used saying that we just want to forget all about this commit. And this um, piece of data here would need to be that, that string of, of characters that was the commit hash. Um, so we talked a little bit about branches. Um, a branch is something that um, if you're doing a specific project, um, you would create a separate branch. You don't want to work on the, the main branch. Um, you'd create a separate branch to do your work there. Um, and you can do that in Git GUI um, under branch create on the menu bar. Uh, but in Git bash, the command is git checkout minus B which means a new branch and the name of your branch. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so if I do a git status here, I'm still on my evergreen main branch. I type in git status and it's gonna tell me I'm on branch, excuse me, <laughs> branch main. Um, my branch is up to date. I don't have any, any changes it doesn't know about, but I do have these untracked files. And this is just me being messy. Um, what I should do and what I will do is, is clean up these files so that I don't have any untracked changes. Uh, so it's saying nothing added to commit. Untracked files are, are present. And it's giving me a hint. If I wanted to track these files, I could use that git add. Um, if I go back and I do the rescan, to this directory in Git GUI, you'll see sort of the same thing. It's showing me the untracked files and I can do anything I want with them. Um, on the new developers page, there's a, a really well done command reference um, for Git bash. I'm just gonna point that it's there um, along with all the other good information there. Um, but I wanna go um, into an actual in Git bash, I want to show signing off on a launchpad bug. And hopefully you'll see the process and <clears throat> you won't find it so, you'll find it more approachable, I'm hoping. Uh, so the first thing we need, oh, actually, the first thing we need to know is, is about sign offs. Um, this is from the Evergreen Wiki, uh, the bug squashing page that has all the good information about bug squashing. Um, Many of you have probably participated in the bug squashing weeks or, or feedback fests where the, the community members have made um, servers available with lots of patches to test. So you have opportunities to test. Um, and if you test something and the code and the change looks good and you, you, think, you think it's good and you think it should be added, you can sign off on it. <clears throat> so um, this is the section on sign off. Uh, it says sign off on the code through Git, which is what we're going to show here. Or you can add a comment to the Launchpad bug that says, I have tested this code and consent to signing off on it with my name. You add your name and your email address. 
<clears throat> and you add that as a comment. That is a good sign off. Um, so not knowing Git shouldn't prevent you from signing off on bugs if you think they should be um, added to Evergreen. Um, signing off in Git is a, is a great way to get started learning about Git, getting involved in the, um, <clears throat> in the project. And it also, it saves the, um, the committers a step uh, when they actually uh, put the code into the main um, evergreen project. Um, sometimes, um, I hate to say it, but sometimes we miss the, uh, the sign-offs in comments because it's kind of a complicated process to do the commits and we always feel bad about that. So, um, <clears throat> and it's a good opportunity to, to, to get to use Git. Uh, so we need a bug to sign off on. So this is a bug um, that was thoroughly tested. And um, I actually, I neglected to capture this screenshot before I signed off on the bug. Um, so if you notice, this says fix committed because by the time that I got back to get the screenshot, um, somebody had, had decided it was good for the project and committed it, a core, core, core committer. Uh, added it to evergreen. So normally when you're um, signing off on a bug, it will look like this. It will say confirmed or something else. It won't have a fixed committed status. But anyway, um, this bug makes some changes to the hold policies screen in, um, in the client where you configure your hold policies. Um, right now, uh, since the hold policies were converted to Angular, <clears throat> the order of the fields is kind of weird. It's alphabetical, and it doesn't really make the best sense if you're if you're trying to figure out what goes where. So what this patch does is it groups the fields in a better order uh, that makes more sense and puts some uh, separators in to make it clearer uh, the data that you're adding. Um, so let's see. On the launchpad bug, there would be a link to a working branch that has this new proposed code in it. And this, this code was worked on by both Taryn McKenna and Stephanie Leary. And I love that teamwork makes the dream work. So they came up with this branch. But if you wanted to sign off on this bug, you would need to go to this branch from this link. And it looks like this. And uh, Taryn's comment said it was the top two commits uh, so it's these two rows right here. And notice they do reference the Launchpad bug. Um, so the thing we need to do is take these two commits and add them to a branch on our local workstation so that we can sign off. Um, so, oh, just a little bit of detail on the commits. This is the older commit. And if, if there's more than one commit, sometimes there's just one. But if there's more than one commit, you always do the older one first and the most recent one last. So that's the older one. And this is the most recent one. And we will need these, these commit hashes here um, to make our sign off branch. OK, so now I'm going to go back to git bash. Um, so here I am. First thing, I want to make sure that my main evergreen code is up to date. Uh, so I will uh, type in the command git checkout main. I happened to be working on something else, this 312 cherry pick test. I type in git checkout main and it switch me, switches me back to the main branch. Um, and it tells me main branch in parentheses at the end here. Uh, I want to make sure I have the most recent copy of Evergreen. So if I do a git pull, I type that in. Um, whether or not this prompts you for a passphrase depends on how you have your git configured. Um, I have it configured for a pass passphrase, mostly because I can't figure out how to change it to not ask me. Uh, but it's fine. <laughs> Makes it more secure. 
Uh, so what it does now is it, it's going to go talk, my computer is going to go talk to the Git server and pull down all the pieces of Evergreen that I don't currently have because I haven't pulled it down recently. So it pulls down all these changes and now I'm up to date. So I always want to be up to date when I create my sign off branch. The other thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I have those pieces of code that I'm signing off on and those are in the working branch. So again, your Git is already configured. It knows about the, the main evergreen repository uh, and it knows about the working repository. Um, so now we're going to pull down all those proposed pieces of code from the working repository. Uh, okay, so once those are up to date, we're going to create a branch for our sign off. So this is the command here, git checkout minus B creates a new branch and I give it a name. Um, user M Morgan is, is my, um, is going to be the path on the working repository and I'll give it the bug number followed by sign off. That's kind of the convention to know when you're creating a sign off branch. So I type that in and it switches me to a new branch and note it has the name here in parentheses at the end. So now here's the fun part. I have to add those two rows of code that we were looking at before. And the command to do that is cherry pick. So I'm gonna cherry pick the older commit. You need at least seven characters of that big long hash. You could use all of them, uh, but it, at least seven. Um, copy and paste, uh, and paste it in. So if all goes well, um, Git will compare those new changes to what it already knows about the code and just drop that new code in there. And uh, this shows it was successful. Um, sometimes you might see that it's not successful. It will complain. It will say the word conflict will be in there somewhere. And if that's true, then you can't sign off on it, it would need to be um, what the, what's called rebased. So um, usually the author of the patch would have to come back and, and see why it doesn't agree with the current code anymore. Okay, so we cherry picked the oldest commit and then we cherry picked the more recent commit and um, we're done there. And notice, I, I should have mentioned this, this minus S on these adds your sign off when you cherry pick the commit. Um, so that puts it in Git. Uh, so you have a signed off branch. Um, if I do a Git log here, type that in, um, I'll see that both of those commits are now here in my sign off branch, which is what I want. Um, so the next thing I have to do is now I'm going to, I've been just working on my own computer. Now I'm going to publish this to the working repository and I do that with a push. So I say git push working and the name of my branch. Um, and because I used, I got this, this uh, hint from Taryn McKenna, because I used the path that it's going to have in the working repository, um, I don't have to worry about names. I can just push it as it is. So we push it. Um, let's see. It did ask me for my passphrase, but that's a me thing. Uh, and it notice down here it says it added a new branch um, with this name. So now if I go back to the working repository, I will see that down here at the bottom. And I will want to copy that link because I want to add that to the launchpad bug as part of the sign off. So back to the launchpad bug, I'll add a comment um, with a link to the sign off branch. Um, I will post that comment and I will also go up to the tags section and add the signed off tag and click the little green check mark here to make sure it registers that signed off tag. So we're done with the sign off. I hope that wasn't too painful. <laughs> um, and I'm also done with the demo, <laughs> which I also hope wasn't too painful. Um, 
I did make a note of some presentations that are available. Uh, there have been a few Git presentations, but these are the only ones I could actually find recordings of. Um, Galen back in 2014 did a, a good command line Git tutorial. Um, Chris Sharp at a new developers meeting did um, an intro to the bash, the command line that we were using. And Jason Stevenson at last year's uh, pre-conference uh, demoed a really comprehensive um, Git demo um, that covers about, as it says, everything you always wanted to know about Git. So those are great presentations to, to know about. Um, Okay, so we have maybe a little time for questions. And because the cat theme seems to be a thing, I had to add some last minute uh, cat pictures. Obviously, only one of them has a question. <laughs> Thank you, um, uh, Michelle. And yes. I do not see any questions in the chat, some good comments though. Um, but yeah, for our attendees, feel free to unmute yourself and ask Michelle all of your burning git questions it looks like we've got you know four minutes to the official end but you know we can hang out to the top of the hour if everyone wants to talk about git unless everybody has has snoozed like two-thirds of the cats on the slide <laughs> hey michelle it's gina hi um, gina Hey, so um, I just want to uh, give you a shout out for uh, always doing what you can to introduce like these types of concepts to the community. Um, I definitely have used, even though it was a different topic, uh, your test box slides a whole bunch of times <laughs> before. Uh, I think it's great that you um, provided a Git um, presentation too, especially since you just became a core committer not too long ago. So. I just wanted to let you know, I appreciate all the work that you do. And uh, oh. this is an awesome thing to talk about. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And and I, I do have to say that at one point um, more years ago than I care to mention, I was was the, the quizzical cat scratching my head, wondering what Git was and why I need to know about it. Um, so yeah, I mean, any I think anything the community can do to, to reach out to new people and sort of get the concepts across um, is is good for the community. Yeah, and I have to, to thank you as well. I'm one who still kind of fears uh, Git and I have, you know, many software developers that I work with that I can call upon, but you have a gift for making it uh, easy to understand. And I, I appreciate that, so thank you. This is the real reason I signed up to moderate this session, by the way. <laughs> Well, I always find for me personally, the first, my first hurdle is I never want to break anything. So, I mean, just understanding that I can mess around all I want with Git on my own computer, I can break it and nobody has to know about it, but I, I learn that way. So I'm hoping it helps other people to learn. Well, thank you. And thank you for sticking to the end. <laughs> thank you very much, Michelle. And this is um, our last presentation uh, in track one of the 2024 Evergreen Conference. So thank you all uh, for making this an excellent conference. Thank you to Gina and our conference committee, all of our great presenters, moderators, um, everyone who made this happen. So. Uh, stay tuned. These recordings will be posted um, on the website or on our YouTube channel at some point, along with uh, slides and various other uh, preservations of all this great knowledge for posterity. So thank you all. And I will close up this session in like, I don't know, a minute or two. I will stop sharing my screen, but hang out for a bit if anybody decides they have a burning question. <laughs>
I am neither seeing nor hearing anything. So Michelle, unless you're answering a question via private message. Uh, nope, I didn't see any. All right, then so I'm going to end this session. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, everybody. Have Thanks, everyone.